there. I don't even know where to start. There are baby fish everywhere right now. I did have to set up some more tanks. So if we come over here, oh, all numbers are going well as well. So as well, as well, they're going well as well. I've got l triple threes and L201s and they are caving again. So the males are trapped females. I have new tanks, kind of. How dodgy is that? Look at this stand. <laughs> it holds, it's fine. Um, there's no one here but me walking around it and Benji, but Benji is fine. Yes, I have my peppermints. I have, what have I got? Just albino common bristle nose and some long fins in there. I have managed to hook it up to this system, which is my L number system. So the pump that's down the bottom in that sump that goes to all these tanks, this little tank here, instead of it going back into there, I've got it trickling in there. It's going through the overflow into there, the overflow into there, and then trickling back in there. <laughs> I know, I've got air stones in these at the moment. I'm just gonna Put some little sponge filters, the same as that. That's hooked up to the battery pump, which is up there. How good is that? So I've managed to snare myself another three three foot tanks on this system. Uh, there's 1200 watts of titanium heater in there. So it's sitting at a lovely 26.8 degrees. So that is fine. I want it a little bit warmer for some of the L numbers, but because it's a mix, I'm going happy medium and they're just gonna coat. If anything stops breeding, I will tweak the temperature. But yeah, that is where we are with that. Uh, around here, this is early morning, so that's why there's no lights on, apart from these guys. My fishes, my fishes, yes, they're all my fishes, but the fishes that I am breeding, the egg layers, I've got the albino, what are they, cherry barbs? And I've got some oh, albino cherry barbs in there, celestial peldinios. Look how many babies there are. How awesome are they? So these will go bright red like the parents on the screen. And look how cute those babies are. They are glowing eyes and a little glowing belly. There are tons. Took a little while for them to actually start developing. I think maybe two or three days before I started noticing one or two. And now there's oh, hundreds. I counted over 80 and then I gave up with them. Celestial Pildinios took another day or two to hatch and these temp temperature in these tanks is around about 25, 26 at the moment. So tons of those. Um, I did try another dino in there, but I don't think the male was fertile. So nothing sort of survived in there, unfortunately. Water quality is good for them as well. It still might happen. It's been about a week, haven't seen any fry. So we're just ignoring it for another week because sometimes they take a bit longer depending on the species. But tons and tons of babies. I still need to, oh, I've got my fittings obviously, these little black things. I'm gonna run these with a little bit of pipe down the front of the tank. Yeah, it's gonna look horrible, but it's just for breeding fish. And a pipe down here into a sump. Haven't done that yet. Uh, got lots and lots of new baby turtles as well. By lots and lots, four, four, that's four. So I have to set up some turtle tanks. So expect a turtle tank video soon. Uh, I have kept turtles and bred them for like 20 years or so. So I have lots of turtles, but these are new species and super cool. Look at that. How cool is that? That's a very cool turtle. Uh, but apart from that, the baby fish thing is going well. Let's jump to tonight. And sneakily, I am in the shop. I'm just gonna show you the difference in males and females and a few tetras and stuff like that. Uh, so if you're at your local aquarium shop or pet shop and you see some fish you wanna breed, it's pretty easy. So we have a tank here of cardinal tetras. So the females are the ones with the bigger belly and the males are more streamlined. This happens with a lot of different tetras. Obviously the females are a bigger fish, so they're designed to hold eggs where the males don't. So if you grab males and females, you wanna grab more males and females because they are open water spawners. So which means that the female develops the eggs, the males fertilize the eggs outside the female's body. This happens with pretty much all barbs, most tetras, well pretty much all tetras and stuff like that. A few different raspora, some lay on eggs and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is just for the basic sort of types of tetras and barbs to spawn. So always try and get like double the amount of males than what you get females. So a good ratio is like three males per one female because then there's more chances that the eggs are gonna get fertilized. So you don't want hundreds of fish in your tank because they're just gonna turn around and eat all the eggs, but 
about five or six, like two females, three males, something like that is a good sort of ratio if you just want to start breeding stuff. So cardinals are a nice, easy fish to breed, low pH, warm temperature, a little bit different than neon tetras and that. Uh, next door though, we have zebra dinos, very easy fish to breed. They'll breed a lot cooler. Uh, about 20 degrees to 23, 24 degrees is their ideal temperature for them. Where the cardinal tetras, you want about 28 degrees, 29 for them to spawn properly. Uh, pH wise, water hardness, Google that. If you want to know, I can tell you in detail if you message me as well. But these little guys here, dinos, super easy. Egg scatterers, again, you want two or three males per female. Females are the big full bodied ones and the males are the streamlined ones. So hopefully that sort of helps people that are asking how you tell males and females. With fish like that, or pretty much any fish from any aquarium shop, they're not really conditioned when we get them in the shop and it takes a week or two for them to fatten up because we feed them live foods and good quality pellets. Um, but a lot of them sell within the week or two. So when you get them home, separate males, females, like I did at the start of this video or the last video, if you missed that. And yeah, once you condition them and the females are really full and the males are all excitable, then you can introduce them and you will get spawns. So make sure you've got your microworm culture or whatever food you're feeding them ready before you get the eggs. Otherwise, yeah, it's a mad panic of trying to feed the fry while they're trying to get food and you don't have the food for them. Anyway, hopefully this helps. Back to the fish room. So if you missed my other video on starting to breed egg laying fish, uh, these are the systems. So they're just two foot tanks. So 60 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So two foot by one foot tanks. Uh, just running air on them at the moment. They are gonna be hooked up to a sump, hence all the little pipes and stuff coming out of them. Yeah, so all it was was conditioning the water, separating the parents so you can separate males and females, fattening up the females, introducing them into these tanks here, which have a little tub with some gravel or rocks on the bottom to hold it down and some moss. The, once you introduce the parents, they will scatter and spawn in there, take the parents back out again, pop them up the top tanks and then wait for the babies to hatch. Once the babies hatch, you feed them things like micro worms, super tiny little food. Uh, they will wiggle and stuff to, for probably two or three days, depending on the species first, before you feed them. And then you just have to make sure that your water is stable with the amount of food you're putting in. If you put too much food in, you can quickly crash the system and kill all the fry, because they are pretty sensitive to ammonia in that. Uh, which is another thing with water quality. So if you're balancing your pH of your water and you have it just below seven, depending on what species, your ammonia is gonna be non-toxic anyway. You still wanna keep check of how much ammonia you have in there but that is the easy way of setting up fish tanks and that. So the reason we use filtration is obviously to break down any chemical waste produced by decomposing food, etc., etc. And if you've got like two or 300 baby fish, they produce a lot of chemical waste, even if they're tiny. Apart from that, um, you can stick a heater in there as well, because depending on what climate you are, there are a lot of videos of people just breeding them in tubs and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, if you're in the wrong climate, it's just not gonna work. You're just gonna stress the fish out, kill the fish. So at least this way, you can maintain your water chemistry, temperature and all that. Without the circulation, if you stick a heater in there, all the heat will rise to the top and then you'll have cold and warm and that's gonna totally screw the environment. So if you do stick a heater in there, have some sort of circulation just so that the heat can evenly circulate around. Um, I'm just lucky where I live because it is subtropical. So this time of year, we can get away without heaters as long as you monitor the temperature. If it is another sort of like, if it's winter and stuff in the next few months, we have sort of like, it gets too cold. So we're gonna need heaters and that. Hence why we've got all these sort of rigged up. So I'm gonna have a little sump there, water dripping through, much like this system here, which is the L number system. So water gets pumped through, trickles through. Because it's only about 24, 25 degrees Celsius at the moment, uh, we want these at about 27, 28. We've got the heaters in the bottom heating all these tanks. And if it gets above that, obviously they've got thermostat, so it'll just turn off with the thermostat, which is sitting in there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, click the thumbs up so I know, and we will see you next time in the fish room.